This week on Down to Earth, South Africa's weighty problem. There are too many elephants and not nearly enough space. The reproduction of elephants goes, goes quite quickly. So, and, and, and if there's no natural predators, they just keep growing and growing and growing. What if we put the brakes on nature? Scientists turn to birth control to rein in the population. We mix it up, you load your dart, and that will contracept an elephant. Certain experts say society has the wrong target. The issue is not elephants, but humans who create artificial environments. Applying contraceptives, contraceptives to elephants is just silly. This week we're down to earth in South Africa. These magnificent giants beside me are known as the African elephant. In certain parts of the continent, the population has been decimated, but here in South Africa, efforts to protect these guys have worked so well that today there's too many and they're hungry and destructive. It's humans that have created the problem and now it's humans that are trying to solve it. Don't be fooled by their placid demeanor. These mighty animals are arguably the true kings of the savannah. This private reserve north of Johannesburg is home to a herd of more than 100. They eat continuously, up to 300 kilograms per day, much of it by felling trees. They don't always like company. This is how we first meet our guide, chased by a charging bull. The elephant gives in eventually, but it's quickly agreed it's time to leave. A copy, Dr. We need to. Yeah, somewhere to site four. We'll leave the elephants alone. Elephant population can double its numbers in about every 10 years. In 10 years' time, we could possibly have uh, 200 elephants, and I think that would definitely be too many elephants. I see there's a very nice example of a tree that was mostly debarked to a degree. They stick their tusk in and pull the bark off, and they take it to their trunk, and then they peel it off the, off the tree. All along the track, there's evidence where the giants have passed. You can see the elephants have pushed the, the tree over. They've uh, most probably been looking at the bark, looking to eat the bark off here. Elephants act like bulldozers on the landscape. Many more in this enclosed reserve could not cope. They're going to impact a lot on, on trees. They could impact too much. And then you, you've also got the danger that they're not getting sufficient food inside it and they're going to break out of the reserve. This is how humans have managed elephant populations in the past. For nearly 30 years, the South African government authorised culling. 15,000 elephants were killed. Today, the practice is largely banned. With the protection of elephants a priority, their numbers surged. Today, the population has grown larger than the country can manage. Ecologists are desperate for a solution less controversial than elephant culling and less expensive than relocation. The answer could be contraception. Today, it's arrived inside this box. Dr Pierre Bester is a vet. I've brought the vaccine that we're going to vaccinate these elephants with. This morning, he's preparing an injection that will stop female elephants from falling pregnant. About 60 cycles. Once the serum is ready, it's added to a dart, the same technique that's used to tranquilize animals for treatment in the wild. The dart looks like this. This is a small replica of the dart. It's got a little charge at the back. As soon as it eats the animal, it goes off and injects. One of its benefits, it doesn't affect the animal's behavior. She actually comes on heat. They mate, but she doesn't fall pregnant. It's such a, it's a, so the normal going of things just goes on. 
in the elephant population. Okay, let's yeah. move it, move it. The wind is here. Once the vaccine is ready, the real challenge begins, finding the elephants in this enormous reserve. But what happens after that is the most impressive. The team is going to fire the contraceptive directly into the backside of the female elephant. Apparently, it's as easy as that. With the takeoff, the search begins. Today, they're looking for four females. This isn't the first time the elephants have been darted. They remember the helicopter and they don't necessarily want to be found. It's a bush farm. It's, it's 9,000 hectares. That's a huge place. But if, they, if they hear us, they probably start running. It can take several hours to find the right herd. But once they do, the darting can begin. First, the vet identifies the target. The pilot flies low, and in one swift shot, the elephant is hit. You need a serious needle to doctor. Right. So you've got to get a muscle, a nice muscle shot, and you've got to hit the animal perpendicular. Unlike the human pill, this form of birth control is non-hormonal. Instead, it acts on the immune system. The vaccine produces antibodies which prevent the elephant sperm from fertilising the egg. It's produced here at the University of Pretoria. Professor Martin Schulman leads us through the reproduction unit. That's ostrich sperm, if you... <laughs> the vaccine is in fact made from a protein that occurs naturally in pigs, making the raw material both relatively cheap and abundant. This beaker holds many, well, probably several hundred ovaries obtained from routinely slaughtered pigs. Uh, we obtain them because they would otherwise have been discarded from an approved abattoir. And from this, we hope to obtain the protein necessary for the vaccine. There's finished product. Its abbreviation is PZP. Already 13 reserves in South Africa are using it, including, most recently, the government's own national parks. Using a vaccine in this way is known as immunocontraception. Being a vaccine, it's also a reversible vaccine, so it's not forever. So, for instance, an animal can re-enter a breeding population as long as, you, as long as you stop boosting the immune system. And bottom line is, as well, it has to be shown to work, and it has been shown to have up to 100% efficacy in certain reserves. We return to Valhafonden, where annual contraception began in 2006. Last month, 62 of its elephants were darted. It's cost less than 100 euros per elephant, money the conservation manager believes is well spent. What results have you have you had here to show that this, this contraception actually works? It uh, definitely works, there's no doubt about that. We have no calves. After three years um, of introducing the contraception plan, we've had no calves whatsoever. And then uh, four years ago, we started, we, we skipped some of the cows, so we would allow them to conceive. We didn't dart them in the, in the annual booster. And we first got our first calves now again after, after two years. Is it interfering in nature though? Well, I think it's a less, uh, less obtrusive than culling. Um, the animals will adapt. Um, I think they are very adaptable. They are social animals. There will be, be stress on the animals, but yeah, the overpopulation also puts stress on them and the, and the alternatives are potentially uh, not as nice. Certain experts object to using a vaccine to manage a problem humans have created. By building fences around the animals, man has prevented nature from applying its brakes. In reality, they are actually living in outdoor zoos, open air safari parks. So it's very artificial. These elephants are not exposed to true ecological realities. They're not exposed to nature. 
They're exposed to the artificialities brought in by people. South Africa's safari business drives much of the demand to breed animals in captivity. Tourism contributes nearly 10% to the national GDP. More than one million people are employed in the sector. The Southern Pride just made a kill. They just killed an animal. Uh, so we're going to go there, but it's very important that you guys uh, keep, keep seated while they're, uh, while they're eating. South Africa is one of the most visited countries on the continent, notably for its animals, a title it intends to keep. Elephant contraception offers a compromise between the lure of tourism dollars and the ideals of hardline conservation.